This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. We turn now to Afghanistan, where a two-star U.S. general was killed Tuesday in what the Pentagon says is the latest insider attack by an Afghan soldier. The attack occurred at a British-run military academy near the capital, Kabul. U.S. officials said Major General Harold Green was shot by the Afghan soldier at the Marshal Fahim National Defense University. Up to 14 coalition troops were wounded in the attack. General Green is the highest-ranking U.S. military official to have been killed in combat since 1970 in the Vietnam War. To talk more about the implications of this, we're joined now by Matthew Akins, an award-winning investigative journalist based in Kabul, Afghanistan, who's reported on past what are known as insider attacks. Matt Akins, welcome back to Democracy Now! Talk about the significance of the killing of General Green. Sure. Well, these insider attacks, or green on blue attacks, as some people call them, were a devastating problem for uh, the Americans and NATO. They spiked in in 2012, and they killed 64 troops, which was 16 percent of all the combat deaths that year. So the only way that they really were able to stop them was by drastically curtailing contact and training with the Afghan security forces, which is, of course, a key part of the plan to transition to Afghan control and get out of Afghanistan. So this kind of attack shows just how deep the problem runs, and that even at the highest levels in what should have been a highly secure group of senior officers. Uh, can, can do damage and will certainly restrict even more the already limited contact that they have with the Afghans. And why do you think, why was uh, uh, Major General Green targeted? I mean, he's responsible for overseeing the, the, the transition uh, and the withdrawal of, of troops. You know, it was probably just an attack of opportunity. The guy saw a group of senior officers and fired from a window of a building. I don't think he knew who he was shooting at, but he definitely knew they were important uh, targets. And what do you think will change about um, a U.S. policy regarding the almost 10,000 troops who are likely to stay in Afghanistan even after the withdrawal? Well, I think it's going to accelerate the case for um, pulling out, for getting out. You know, the, the Obama's plan right now is to have all uh, of the military force out by 2017. So it's probably only going to give added impetus for that. Um, with, there's a lot of concern, obviously, given what's happening in Iraq, where you have a complete near disintegration of large portions of security forces. You wrote a piece called A U.S.-backed militia runs amok in Afghanistan. We were just talking about war crimes in Gaza. Right. Can you talk about what you found in Afghanistan? Well, we found that three men who had been rounded up in a joint U.S. Special Forces Afghan commando raid were then handed over to an illegal militia that they were cooperating with um, in this local area, and that militia then executed on the same day those three men. The U.S. military said they thought the men were released unharmed. They even denied working with this militia. When we call, when we found the militia commander, a man named Abdullah, he admitted to executing the three men, saying they were Taliban, and said that the U.S. Special Forces supplied them with money, with weapons, and with training. And in your work there, you've lived in Kabul for many years. How common is an incident like that from the research that you've done? You know, it's probably a lot more common than we realize. In this case, it take, took weeks of grueling on-the-ground research just to unearth something that was completely denied by the military. And the hundreds of thousands of weapons sent to Afghanistan that the Pentagon says they can't find? It's, yeah, it's, it's a half a million small arms that we flooded into a country that's already suffered from 30 years of war. Well, I want to thank you very much, Matthew Akins, for joining us. Matthew Akins is an award-winning journalist, um, going back right now to uh, Kabul, uh, based there, recently investigated possible war crimes in Afghanistan. In an article for Al Jazeera called A U.S.-backed militia runs amok in Afghanistan, we'll link to it at democracynow.org.